On today's Locked On Senators, we've got a game day preview with the Sen starting three games in four nights on the road against the Buffalo Sabres. And both teams had high hopes for this season, but which team fell further from their expectations? We'll get into all that. Plus, Jake Sanderson, Owen Power, two up-and-coming defensemen, will compare and contrast their seasons and careers so far. That's all coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. Your team, every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 1011 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan, soaking in the South Scottsdale sun alongside Brandon Biller up in the Blue Mountains. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. You can also follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter, Locked On Dot Senators on Instagram. The show is free and available on all podcast platforms, including on YouTube, where we say hello and let you know a like, comment, and subscription go a long way to helping the show grow. Today is Wednesday, March 27th, and Pilsy, what's the answer for you? Which of the Sens and Sabres have been more disappointing? I mean, obviously, this is a uh, bias coming from a Senators podcaster and Senators fan. And I guess people could switch that either way they want, depending on how they want to look at this answer. But Ross, it's got to be the Ottawa Senators. I mean, the hype for this offseason, the new ownership coming in, it just felt like this was finally an opportunity for the Ottawa Senators to not be in the bottom of the league here. And it felt like, at least from a Sens fan perspective, looking at Buffalo, they still weren't really sure what's going on with their goaltending. They hadn't figured that out there. And it just seemed like their young players didn't have the experience and weren't given the opportunities to take that next step like the Ottawa Senators' young players were. So, And obviously the Sens are far below the Sabres in the standings. So... I'm going to have to say the Ottawa Senators' disappointing season is much worse than the Buffalo Sabres. I'll agree with that just for the standpoint that even as recently as two weeks ago, the Buffalo Sabres had a meaningful game. They would rattled off seven or eight wins in a row and then had a, a game that really felt like if they were able to win, they could have propelled their season being against Detroit. They lose 4-1 and, and really it's, I mean, falling off from there. They're coming off uh, a really tough trip out West where they went one and two. I guess now we got to count the Kraken out West. I usually just look at the Canadian team. So I guess they went two and two. They beat the Kraken and the Flames on either end of it, but uh, an eight to three loss in Edmonton and three, two against the Vancouver Canucks. So they've just kind of gone back to their win one, lose one habit. And that was after rattling off uh, a stretch of, nine four and one and you can even you know straight change that a little bit to an eight three and one uh stretch where they they put themselves back into contention but they're still super young yeah and they also they have a lot of young talent in their lineup that's just getting their feet wet we'll talk about jake sanderson owen power in the next segment but i mean if if we want to even start with buffalo because we're already on it like zach benson being a full-time nhl or right after his draft and you, you knew that there was something special watching him last year with the uh, with the Winnipeg Ice, and he's just stepped into the National Hockey League. It's not like he's blown the doors off points wise, but this is what I'm talking about about Ridley Gregg too, where it's like this year, get your feet wet, figure out the everyday life of the NHL. There's no days off, no easy games either. And next year, guys like Benson and Ridley Gregg, you're hoping they take a huge step forward and can be contributing 45 plus point guys. Yeah, and then there's even more players like that on their roster, uh, Ross. Like, you look at Peyton Krebs, 
just 23. He's trying to um, find his way in the NHL. You look at um, guys, all like their goaltending. This is the ages of their goaltending. Eric Comrie, 28. Devin Levi, 22. Ukapeka Lukanen at 25. Like these are all such young guys that are being expected to carry this team. And then you look at Darlene, 23, although he has a lot of experience. Bo and Byram their newest addition he's 22 Owen power 21 like a lot of these guys are in their early 20s and they're gonna have to do the heavy lifting for this team uh another guy i'm forgetting uh jack quinn who's gonna be back in the lineup tonight he's only 22 like good good ottawa boy yeah there's so there's so many pieces of this team that are literally just dipping their toes in the nhl and once they get a season or two or maybe even three they have the core and they have the group of players that can fill out a really nice roster once they get that experience under them. Funny enough, it was actually that loss that Ottawa suffered against Buffalo towards the start of the season. It was game seven for Buffalo. It was game seven for Ottawa as well. It brought the Sens to three and three on the season, right? Because they they started out three and one. Then they lose that game to Detroit where they outplayed yeah. them like crazy in the first period. Fell apart with special teams after that, but that loss to Buffalo, where they put lipstick on it in the third period, they were down four to one, five to one after the second period. That was the game where they forgot to tell Anton Forsberg that he was pulled. Yep. Awesome. That's the first kind of crack in the armor where I was like, maybe the Sens team isn't that good, or maybe they're not cohesive. What's or, going or, yeah, on? Why the dysfunction was put on display there? I believe we called that a must-win game. I'm sure we did. Back we in the must-win game days. Yeah, back. <laughs> what a time to be alive that was. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Every game in November going forward is a must-win game at this point. But, look, the Buffalo Sabres have had a, a less-than-ideal season as well. When you look at their overall 500 record, that begs the question, maybe this is a bit of a spin zone. Yeah, more disappointing season for Buffalo, but... I would almost rather be where the senators are still going into next season, getting the extra high pick, even though Buffalo could win the lottery for the third time in four years between getting Darlene and power. Yeah. Well, wait, did they move up for those picks? Yes. For, so there's I a new rule so. as of 2022 that uh, you can't move up. Oh man, I better get this right. It's on Tankathon. You can't move up more than I think three times. Okay. Buffalo was yeah, last. Team, in so wait, sorry, Ross, just to complete this, teams are only allowed to improve their positioning via the lottery twice in a five-year period, beginning with the 2022 lottery. So, so beginning with 2022, so that X's this out. As two, does the fact Buffalo is actually dead last in both those drafts. Okay, so never mind. <laughs> that, hey, that's good. That's good Scratch thing to up. know, though. Does that yep. apply to anybody yet? No, because it's only been two drafts. Nobody moved up in both 22 and 23. I don't think so. No, yeah. but it's something to keep our eye on going forward. Um, but the thing, Ross, to play devil's advocate to your point there, the they got Buffalo's, a goalie. Well, yeah, they they got a goalie. Two of them, really. I think Devin Levi is going to be a good goalie once he has time. Going from college to the NHL is an insane jump for a goalie. So I think everyone expected him to struggle. I think uh, you and I, Ross, in our season preview episodes, were like, yeah. Good luck, Devin Levi, trying to be the number one goalie for this team. It's not going to work out well. Yeah, nine, um, 927 in the AHL this year, too, for him. Yeah. So what where I was going with this is the Buffalo Sabres have so many other good prospects that they don't need to rely on getting another pick. Like, look, at, like their defense core has a first overall defenseman, another first overall defenseman, and then a fourth overall defenseman. Like that, And then, yeah, you look at guys like J.J. Paterka, uh, Dylan Cousins, Peyton Kreb, Jack Quinn. Like, they have so much talent that is, that's right there and it's going to be ready. For the Buffalo Sabres, finishing way lower and kind of in the Ottawa's range, I don't know if it would really do them that good because they only have so many roster spots where they can have these guys. That's why you saw them move Casey Middlestat, which is kind of a, a weird move. You're like, okay, we got too many good centermen. So let's move a centerman for a position that we have two first overall picks for already. Like that's, 
that is the conundrum that the Sabres already are in. They're like, we got too many good guys. We have to find ways to move other players into other spots just to fill out the roster a proper way. So, and Darlene, uh, he's, he can play both sides. Bo and Byram can play both sides. So they have that flexibility, thankfully, but I don't know, Ross. I really think the Buffalo Sabres, unfortunately, it pains me to say, but they are more on track than the Ottawa Senators are. We'll see where they're at tonight. 7 o'clock puck drop in Buffalo, and here's how the Sabres are expected to line up. Tage Thompson, first line center between Jordan Greenway and Alex Tuck. Dylan Cousins between J.J. Paterka and Jack Quinn, making his return from a long injury absence. Peyton Krebs centering a line of Jeff Skinner and Zach Benson. And the fourth line, Zemgus Gergensens with Robinson and Olofsson. On the back end, it's Zemgus Ger- oh, on the back end, it's Bowen Byram with Erasmus Dahlin. It's Owen Power with Henry Yoki Haru. Kale Clegg is with Jake Bryson. On uh, In goal, we expect it to be Uko Pekka Lukanen. Uh, Devin Levi is up and could be the backup. Pilsy, give me a quick lookout player to watch. Uh, lookout player for me, Ross, is going to be Bowen Byram. Uh, as I just mentioned, he was part of that trade, the one-for-one one trade. You love to see hockey deals. doesn't happen that often these days, but traded straight up for Casey Middlestad from the Colorado Avalanche. And Byram knew all along he was never going to get to be a number one defenseman on Colorado. Kale McCarr is there, which is what makes this trade kind of ironic he's got two first overall defensemen in his path here so it's not like he has an easier path here but however his ice time has gone up drastically since switching to the buffalo sabers in nine games with buffalo he has an average ice time of 23 32 with all the other games with uh colorado this year so 55 games he was averaging 1951 so almost four minutes more ice time he's getting and he's got six points in nine games with the Sabres so I'm gonna be looking out for him to see how they fit him into that back end I'm excited to see that as well uh for me though I'm going up front because we've talked a lot about Buffalo this segment but haven't mentioned Tage Thompson and uh, he'll be my lookout player last year 47 goals 94 points this year struggling to um to re do those numbers and rightfully so those are big boy numbers uh still 22 goals 45 points in 61 games he had more goals Thompson. last year than he has points right now wow there you go and uh against the sends i always feel like he's he's a guy who comes to play he's also on a bit of a streak right now he's got points in five straight and has 10 points in his last eight games so starting to come alive after uh, a slow start to the season so the six foot seven centerman Will be my lookout player to watch. Hard but to miss. On, on the other side, how about a six foot six defenseman, Owen Whoa. Power, first overall pick back in 2021, but he's only four months younger than Jake Sanderson. So I think it's a very fair comparison to make. We're also going to look at the Ottawa Senators, who had an optional skate this morning as they begin three games in four nights. They will be in Buffalo, of course, tonight. Tomorrow, they'll play back at home against Chicago, and then they'll be in Winnipeg on Saturday. So we'll get into that throughout the rest of the week. But coming up next, we will get into the Jake Sanderson versus Owen Power debate and look at the Sens lines into tonight's game. This is Locked On Senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. They got superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time. You get your money back. It's that simple. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not burning cash. With all the parts you need, but at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that W. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Check it out today, guys. eBay Motors. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub. If you're looking for a spot in the Glebe, 
the Glebe Central Pub is where to go. I mean, it's a neighborhood pub with great food, awesome drinks, and the atmosphere to match. But what I love so much about the Glebe Central Pub is that they're always making sure that it's an inclusive environment and one where you can go and have trivia, interact with the other patrons, and really feel a part of the community at the Glebe Central Pub. You know the games are going to be on the TVs. You know the dartboard's going to be there if you want to throw some darts. You also know that if you follow them on social media, Glebe Central Pub, you'll be able to see when they have live events, like their live music, like their open mic night. You never know what's going on at the Glebe Central Pub until you follow them on social media, Glebe Central Pub. They also, of course, have the Sens Shuttle. So you can go to the game tomorrow, hassle-free, just $17 round trip. The bus leaves the pub an hour and 15 minutes before the game. Sue will bring you right back afterwards. It's just good vibes on the GCP shuttle. They also pick you up right where they drop you off. So no confusion, no problem. All good times, all courtesy of the Glebe Central Pub. So get your tickets today on their website, GlebeCentralPub.com. But if you're last minute, hop in. And if they have room on the bus, you can go. But that is a bit of a risk. You can always go and get your tickets in advance online. So go check out the GCP, 779 Bank Street. The vibes are free at the GCP. All right, Billsy. Here we are, another game day for the Ottawa Senators. It is game 70. One, 12 games left on this Senator season. Of course, we'll be boots on the ground for three of those 12. Um, are you at the point now where you, you're aware you're going to miss it? Or are you still at the point where you're frustrated? Or these back-to-back wins over the weekend help you out? No, I'm aware I'm going to miss it. Like a, like when the puck is about to drop and I, I've got my laptop uh, I, I'm on my couch and I'm ready to go, ready to watch the game, I'm like, okay. Let's hope the Sens don't get scored on quickly. And I'm going through all these mind uh, things in my mind. Like, is Corpus Al going to let a bad goal in early? Is Tim Stutzla going to be able to have his magic dancing through the neutral zone and into the offensive zone? What is Jacob Chickren going to do that's going to make me want to pull my hair out? All these things are going on through my mind. But then I'm like, you know what? I, I got to enjoy this while I have it because it's going to be gone soon. And obviously, Senators hockey right now is not as exciting as it could be and should be but still it sends hockey and we're absolute sickos and we love it so i am cherishing it while we have it ross and we appreciate all these other sickos who still vibe vent with us whether it's in the postcast or every single day we are your team every day obviously the numbers down a bit but makes sense some people are just like hey let's make some changes to this group and then we'll see where it goes from here. But you know we'll get to our draft coverage. We'll talk about the Stanley Cup playoffs and all that once the puck is is done dropping in Ottawa for the year as they'll wrap up their season with two road games on April, I believe, the 15th and 17th, 15th and 16th um, this season. Sorry, the glare is killing me. 15th and 16th. So then it'll be another year of hashtag sends abroad but for now let's look at the players who are on the sends this is the lines from the last game as we mentioned it was an optional skate this morning with a busy stretch coming up shane pinto at center between brady kachuk and drake batherson tim stutzla with angus crookshank and claude Giroux. ridley Gregg is between dominic kubalik and matthew joseph and mark castelik is with boris kachuk and parker kelly on the back end jake sanderson with artem zub Thomas Shabbat with Eric Brandstrom and Jacob Chikrin with Jacob Bernard Docker. Eunice Corpusallo confirmed your starter for tonight. Your locked on player to watch. My locked on player, Ross, is going to be the captain, number seven, Brady Kachuk. Uh, you talked about Tage Thompson and his size. We're going to get into Owen Power and his size. So, Big boy for the Ottawa Senators, six foot four, two hundred twenty-one pounds. Brady Kachuk is going to have to bring it tonight, as he's probably going to be going up against both those guys, um, Tage Thompson on forward, and then Owen Power on defense. And Brady's been doing well recently, Ross. In his last six games, nine points for the captain, including back-to-back games on the weekend with two assists in each, and he had that hat trick, of course, March sixteenth. So. I'm expecting big things from Brady here, and he's going to have to be one of those players that 
uses his size and his strength to his advantage when going up against a big Buffalo Sabres team. I agree with that. I think it's an important game for Brady, but also an important game for Tim Stutz. I have a feeling he hits 20 goals tonight, Pillsy. I think it's two goal Timmy night for, for the Ottawa Senators. I just love the way he's been playing the, the last uh, number of weeks. Even I think it's an extended yep. period further than just when he's got 12 points in his last 10 games and he's cooking. But I think Angus Crookshank is the perfect kind of worker bee pit bull Call him what you want, Honey Badger, on that line to just Jacques go Martin in. Jacques says he plays like a dog out there, so you love that. He's got that well, dog he, in him. He does. And, I mean, Claude Giroux's got six points in his last eight games as well. So I'm going to be locked on to Tim Stutzla tonight. So you and I were highlighting the big dogs to come and play uh, in this road game in Buffalo. So that's the Ottawa Senators lineup for tonight's game. Let us know in the comments who's your locked on player to watch on the other side finally it's here the debate jake sanderson versus owen power a little ironic that the american kid is playing on the canadian team and vice versa yeah. but there's so much to compare with these two players we'll get into that next you're listening to locked on senators your team every day today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at fan duel guys March Madness is fully underway. Nobody has a perfect bracket anymore, but that shouldn't stop you from being excited about the basketball games that are still ahead. So regardless of how your bracket is, head to FanDuel because you can bet on every single game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on big upset, upsets, the underdogs like Ross was doing, I don't know if he's still uh, on the underdog uh, train there, or you want to bet on who's going to win it all. Do it all with America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, futures, whatever you like. You can find it on FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. Check it out today, guys. It's FanDuel. Right, Pilsy, here it is. Game day for the Ottawa Senators taking on the Buffalo Sabres. The Senators come into this game back-to-back -back winners. And our friends at FanDuel, they're going wild. They've got a parlay right now, a popular same-game parlay. Sabres money line, Tage Thompson anytime goal scorer, and then shot props for Dylan Cousins, two or more. Tage Thompson, three or more. Brady Kachuk, four or more. And the over... Oh a lot going on what However, what's the total odds for that ten dollars wins 106 so like plus a thousand and sixty or something yeah yep. wow oh, man. so if you want to get wild responsibly you can go do that over at get wild responsibly <laughs> that should be our new slogan ross accelerating patience baby that's just <laughs> what we're trying to do here um we've accelerated the growth of jake sanderson's career rather quickly in ottawa we knew he was a stud coming out of college with the university of north dakota but jake sanderson has been all that and more for the senators leading them in time on ice having 32 points this guy's next point or sorry his next point will be 32 which will tie last year's output and he's done it tonight will be nine games less than he had it. So if he gets a point tonight, that's a pretty big accomplishment. He doubled his goal output already, and he's been a stud away from the puck. Before we get into the comparison sake, how would you describe Jake Sanderson's season to a nonsense fan? Consistent. Uh, I mean, this is his sophomore season. I think a lot of people expect a sophomore slump here, but with Jake Sanderson... I feel like at the start of the season, Ross, it, it was very high, the uh, thoughts and the play of Jake Sanderson. And then it kind of leveled out. I feel like there's like a good 25, 30 game stretch where we weren't really applauding Jake Sanderson. But at the same time, it's just kind of like good head nods like, yep, Sanderson, another nice game. Yep, Sanderson, another nice game. Like it wasn't anything spectacular. It's, so basically, he's either exactly what you expect from him or a little bit better. Like, I can't think of 
I don't know, maybe there's one or two games, but they're not popping out at me where he was a little bit disappointing. But the thing with Sanderson is just he's so damn consistent. And when you're such a smooth skater like that, you're going to be able to have consistent play just because like having that skating ability will help you out in every single aspect of the game. And that's what Sanderson relies on. And he's only going to get better with time. Only going to get better, I think, is an understatement, too. He's already signed his big ticket, but the way he takes care of his body, the way he shows up every day to get better, I think, I mean, the sky's the limit for Jake Sanderson, but it's the offense to me that has really kind of popped more than I expected. And we're talking about a guy who hasn't had a point in quite a while. He's actually on a bit of a stretch right now where a puck hasn't been going in for him since he had that goal and an assist against Pittsburgh. He's gone pointless in seven straight. So you look at these little kind of dips, at least in terms of the offense. There's another stretch where he went four without a point. Uh, back in November, he went four without a point as well. So it's not just that the the offense is is kind of plateauing. We already mentioned he's he's going to set a career high this year as long as you know this seven doesn't turn into nineteen. Uh, I think he'll be fine with that. But away from the puck, the pivots, everything, it just seems like he's using his skating to his advantage, which I think is kind of the number one thing for him because he's never going to be, you know, that physical presence that a guy like Owen Power could be if he wanted to kind of use that size for more of a physical acumen. But I just think that with Jake Sanderson, for me, he's taken on so much responsibility, especially with Thomas Shabbat out of the lineup. He was a number one defenseman. And then even when Shabbat comes in, we're seeing it night in, night out. Jake Sanderson is the top pair guy. They've yep. got Thomas Shabbat at two and Jake, Jacob Chikrin at number three, which you wouldn't have expected at least maybe uh, on the outside looking in mm. on this team. So I think the Sens are so lucky to have Jake Sanderson as a part of the core going forward, a complete untouchable when it comes to revamping this roster come off season and just brings it every single night. So that brings us, I mean, he was the fifth overall pick in the 2020 draft. And then a uh, guy who was born, Four months later, Owen Power, one of the oldest players from the 2021 draft, goes first overall. And we got to watch what we say here, Pilsy, because we're going to be cheering for him one day when he's wearing the, the Maple Leafs, the Team Canada uniform. Or he actually does have a world championships last year with Team Canada. Huge part of um, of kind of the the next wave of talent coming from uh, from Canada. But, man, this guy, he's pretty much putting up an identical season. As Jake Sanderson, it's also his sophomore year. Plus, I mean, he did get those eight games out of school that Sanderson was injured, so couldn't play. Did sign, but couldn't play. But if you look at the numbers, Sanderson has one more game played. One. That's it. But then you look, and Jake Sanderson has two more goals and three more points. So two more goals, one more assist than Owen Power. Like, these guys are really neck and neck. Yeah, it's crazy how comparable they are. Like, really, the only difference is, is Sanderson is a better skater and Owen Power uh, Owen Power is a bigger guy. <laughs> like, that's that's kind of it. Like, they, they both have such similarities that both of these teams are blessed to have young stud defensemen like this. Like, I don't, I don't even really know, Ross, where we can, other than the skating and the size, where we can point major differences for these guys. Well, I think, and maybe this is also a product of your environment. Rasmus Dahlin's, of course, going to take the number one minute. <laughs> number one, both these guys' first overall picks, but in the defensive zone and kind of be that stalwart. And I look at the the offensive zone start time. Owen Powers at 54% of his starts are in the offensive zone, 553 in his career, whereas Jake Sanderson's on the other side of that 50% marker. He's at 47 this year and 46 for his career. So he's being utilized in more defensive situations. Yep. With and he's suit, right? Right, with Zub. I mean, that's a shutdown pair yep. if I've ever seen one. So to, to still be able to put up the offensive numbers without having the ad advantage of starting in the offensive zone. And look at the shot difference to me. And I know it's not the be-all, end-all for defensemen, but 142 for Sanderson, only 93 for Owen Power. 
When you look at it, they neither of them take very many penalties, which I think is very impressive for both that they're able to control their body and, and defend these, these top end players without taking penalties. If you take out Jake Sanderson's fight against Matthew Kachuk from the end of November, they actually are identical. They both have 16 penalty minutes. So eight minor penalties for each of these two players, which is just kind of another kind of eye opening. Wow. Like, are they a bit of a clone of one another? And I think for Sens fans, like, okay, well, I mean, that guy's a first overall pick. So if we're going to kind of pump Sanderson's tires, <laughs> I mean, this is kind of the guy who um, would be at the top echelon of what you're comparing to. So I think Sanderson's done every bit as good to match what Owen Power's done so far in his career. Sanderson averages just a, a shade over 23 minutes per game, whereas Owen Power is at 2241. So again, they're 20 seconds different. Yeah, it's crazy. And Ross, I think you, if you would ask the um, people outside of Sens and Sabres fandom, which one of these two guys do you think would have a fight <laughs> attached yeah. to their career? Probably well, not Jake Sanderson. Well, Owen Power doesn't play the game physically. That's a thing. He, which got, I mean, with that size and the last name Power, you should be out there hammering guys. They're tied in hits, Sanderson and Power. 39 each. Jeez, I, yeah, these guys were made in a lab and cloned. Sanderson has 116 block shots. Power has 98. Uh, giveaways 35 for Power and a lot more for Jake Sanderson. Obviously, he's, he's playing oh, in, wow. in his own zone. He's got 71. So Whoa, um, okay, there's the major outlier. That's surprising to me that it's that high because, like, I don't think of Sanderson and I'm like, ah, oh, giveaway machine. Sander no, but Sanderson also has uh, 10 more takeaways as well. So he's just in the mix a little bit more than Owen Power. But, I mean, both both elite-level players, and I know the Red Wings fans want to throw Seaman Edmondson in the mix. Let's get this guy out of the AHL first before we can start really having that conversation. But I think this is a um, a head-to-head -head matchup we're going to be talking about for the next decade or more. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, the battles between Buffalo and Ottawa, I think, are going to be just Hopefully. as good, if not uh, better, than the battles between Ottawa and Detroit. Like, the, the three of those teams, they're going to be constantly pitted up against each other, and the success and failures of each of those teams are going to go hand-in-hand -hand with su success and failures of the other two. So, this... This little uh, love triangle between these teams trying to make it out of rebuilding and into the next phase here is going to be fascinating. And we'll be here every step of the way to break it down. Let us know in the comments, how would you compare or contrast Owen Power and Jake Sanderson and who's going to have the better career? I got my guy. I got Sandy, but not by much. I think they're both going to be. I just think Sanderson might top out at a higher level points total based on what he also brings as a number one penalty killer and all that i i just don't i don't know i i you could you could convince me either way though these are two great players no i again obviously wearing an ottawa senators hat in an ottawa senators room on an ottawa senators podcast so don't tell me that i'm biased no bias here whatsoever no. but ross when it comes to defensemen like this Almost every single time, I will give the edge to the better skater. Yep. And fair. Jake Sanderson's one of the best skaters among his age group in the entire league. So he's only going to get better. I just think that, like, if Owen Power was physically dominant, then maybe that balances things out. But he's just, he's not there yet. Maybe he'll get there eventually, but he's not there yet. Whereas Jake Sanderson already is using his skating to, to beat out elite NHL talent and I think that's going to take him far. So I'm with you. Jake Sanderson is my vote. Postcast after tonight's game. Pilsy, any final thoughts on today's show? Uh, final thoughts for me is this is episode 1011. Ross, we need to do everything in our power to get Daniel Alfredson on for episode 1111. I know it's 100 Great. episodes from now, but like if we like we need to put that out into the universe. I think everyone would appreciate that. Alfredson would appreciate the 1111 praise Alfie. So that was just, as you announced the episode number today, I was like, you know what? We got to keep this in mind that when we get close to 1,111, it has to be Daniel Alfredson on the podcast. So just, just want to put that out. there. Well, it's also kind of 
poetic that on the day that we do episode 1011, the Senators are playing in the arena where Alfredson scored the biggest goal in Sens history to send the Sens to the Stanley Cup final. What do you mean? Oh, in- oh, it's for today's game. Okay, I, th- I thought you meant 100 episodes from now. <laughs> no, no, happen. no. Like, They're what? in Buffalo tonight. Yes. One on three, not great odds. <laughs> he scores. And Boom. the Senators are going to the Stanley Cup final. Wow, that feels so long ago. It was. And so far away. Yeah, like that. That's a lifetime ago, I believe. Ross, you were in. You were just starting high school at that point, and I was grade finishing nine. off grade eight. Yes. Yeah, so, and the beauty like, of of Lisger is we had City Hall, we had Sens Mile right there on Elgin. What what a time to be alive! And we we took it for granted because the Senators had made the playoffs every year. Yep. We just thought it was just another year, and the closer they got to the Stanley Cup. And that next year we were going to have another great year. And I mean, they started out so hot the next year and then it all came crashing down, but hopefully some sustainable success, some accelerated patience over the off season. And we'll be here as we mentioned to break it all down, whether it's trade signings, free agents, rumors, and the NHL draft that is all going to be discussed. Please consider subscribing to the show. Leave a comment below for Brandon Piller. I'm Ross Levitan. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow for another edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. Your team every day.